Mornings on 2 is hitting the road for a zip trip to South San Francisco. I've been here more than 15 years. You'll experience this community's diverse food scene. The key is the ingredients that you use. And learn how it's evolving from the industrial city to a 21st century hub for biotech. I never heard that. I don't know. Plus, meet the young woman designed to join its firefighting ranks. It's even more than I thought it was going to be. I enjoy it. coming to work every day. It doesn't feel like a job to me. And the congresswoman who proudly calls South City home. It was a great childhood. Inspired me to be a leader. As Mornings on 2 takes you on a zip trip to South San Francisco. It's a cool, great start to the day, but the people here in South San Francisco's Orange Park wouldn't have it any other way. South City, of course, used to be home to steel mills and shipbuilding. Now it's home to medical advances, million dollar homes, and a civic pride that is unmatched. We have police, we have fire, we have the residents of South San Francisco all coming out here to Orange Park. I think I heard Steve say it's about 52 degrees. We had to shed the uh, puffy jackets. I'm still cold here, I thought. I didn't shed anything, guys. Yeah, I still have the puffy jackets. On. I was optimistic when we saw you guys a couple of minutes ago. I thought surely this fog will burn off and it'll be sunny by nine o'clock, but you knew better. Hey, mid-July, South San Francisco. This is what I wanted, right? We've been to other cities right. where it's been blue skies. I wanted the fog and we have it here this morning. Growing up in the Bay Area, South San Francisco for me, just kind of that city I would fly by on my way to fly out of San Francisco International. Right. Didn't spend a ton of time here. I had a couple friends here I would spend some time. In fact, one time I did play a football game here. Okay. And I, you asked me why I remember this particular football game. It was like fall of 92, fall of 93 when okay. I was going to SI in the sunset. It was a home and away. We won the home game, but when we came to South San Francisco, I have never been so beat up in wow. my life. Let's I find mean, that guy came, and have him on. And they hit me hard, and they hit the whole team hard. So uh, they have a great football program at South San Francisco High School. I know my mom's in Colorado right now. She's disappointed, Gassia, because this is the one zip trip she really wanted to come with me because she oh. is a huge fan, actually an addict of C's candy. Oh. She's been eating that chocolate for decades. Right. So I'm going to try and uh, maybe sneak a box for mom later this morning. No, that's, ce that, that's celebration candy that we that's grew right. up with here in the Bay Area. So our zip trip today has brought us to South City 94080. There's so much to explore about South San Francisco, and it's not just me and you out here. Nope. We have South Castaneda. He is out at... Uh, the Armstrong Brewing Company. He's giving us a taste of the town, and it's not just beer. There's actual food. Sal's going to be talking to us about. Also, uh, Frank is here in Orange Park. He is with the good men and women of South City. Again, I mentioned police, firefighters, residents. Claudine Wong found the fun here at Orange Park. She's in front of a giant inflatable slide. I have to say, this city came out in a big way to welcome us, and we are thankful for that. All right, we'll get to them in just a bit, but first, let's uh, roll back the clock a little bit and give you uh, some history of South San Francisco decades ago all the way up to today. South San Francisco originated in the late 19th century as a site for the establishment of stockyards and a marketplace for cattle. The city, located on the western shore of San Francisco Bay in northern San Mateo County, had its beginning in 1890 in the capitalist mind of Peter E. Iller, a wealthy whiskey maker from the Midwest. Incorporated in 1908, the city soon experienced an influx of other industries, which included a large shipbuilding industry to support the two world wars. During the next few years, a considerable portion of its real estate was devoted to industries which include manufacturing, wholesaling, transportation facilities, and utilities. One of the most recognizable companies, Seize Candies. The world famous chocolate company continues to make its fabulous chocolates inside its South San Francisco factory. In a 1928 special election, voters approved a property tax increase to fund the construction of huge concrete letters on the side of San Bruno Mountains proclaiming South San Francisco, the industrial city. Today, with a population of more than 63,000 people, a thriving biotech community anchors the city's economy. It is home to the largest biotech cluster in the world, with over 200 biotech companies, including industry giants such as Genentech and Amgen. And I mentioned Genentech in that story right there, but on the way in to South San Francisco, going across Park Presidio and 19th Avenue, gosh, yeah, I think I saw probably four or five Genentech buses ah. with you know, employees on right, board right. headed to South San Francisco, more than 4,000 employees right here. Right, that's one of the many ways the city has changed in recent years and decades, but one thing that hasn't changed is that it's the people of South San Francisco that make this city what it is. Mm. KTV's Claudine Wong, I mentioned she, she found the fun, and boy, did she in a big way, live uh, right here just a few feet away in uh, Orange Park. Tell us what you have, Claudine. 
What a great turnout here. It's been amazing to watch. We've got firefighters, police officers. You've mentioned big slides behind us. We've got a firefighter who was actually right there on the top of that ladder as they stretch the uh, ladder up high in the sky and the American flag uh, l hanging above us. Really incredible. If we take a look around us, I just want to see you the incredible turnout that has come out today. And you have everyone here from the community, from the first responders to just community members who've come out to just celebrate how great South City is and to show us all the little different sides of it that we don't get to see. Now, we are all over this park. I mean, all over it and it's a fairly big park. I want to show you on this side over here as we come. We've got our setup here but on the other side of the park let me show you that picture as well because so many booths and people and community groups have come out to say hey let us tell you what we're about as well and that's really what, what's so incredible about this. Our uh, area over here is kind of stretching all throughout this 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 part of the park but if you come back live to our picture here you can see this is our little KTV spot. And then we got Troy over here. I want to introduce you to Troy really, really quickly before we go. Troy is DJing here. How's it going out here? I'm doing well. And you have this Glad other have job. You. That, that is correct. Tell me what else you do for the city. I'm a parking enforcement officer for the city of South San Francisco. And I love Police it. Department. <laughs> I love it. Your wife got you to come out here. You That's do right. this on the side. That's and right. we were talking a little earlier. Where do you get more love? Here at the DJ booth well, or when you're handing uh, out a ticket? I get love everywhere, wherever <laughs> I can find it. That's a good answer. All right, well, we appreciate you being out here for Thanks us, for Troy. Uh, certainly a great, great day out here in South City. We'll send it back to you guys. <clears throat> All right, Claudine, thank you for that. Good times here at Orange Park. Good times outside of Orange Park sure. this morning. Our 9 o'clock co-anchor, co Sal Castaneda, is at Armstrong Brewing Company with a little taste of the town on this Friday morning. Hey, Sal. Hey, Mike, Gassia, you know, I'm standing out here on Grand Avenue, uh, a lot of businesses here. We'll talk about that in just a second. But, you know, my assignment is always to go to a town. Now, this is a town that I know a little bit about. There's a really nice Mexican food scene here. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But when I went out to South City, the first thing I wanted was a sandwich. Let's see what I found in Taste of the Town. If you want a no-nonsense Italian sub in South San Francisco, look no further than Little Luca Sandwich Shop on El Camino Real. The place looks small on the outside, but cranks out between three and 500 sandwiches a day on the inside. I would recommend the Dutch Crunch. Diane McClymans and her husband Mike took over at Little Luca from the original owners nearly 20 years ago, but they kept most things the same. What's special about this place is its long history, generous portions, and oh yeah, the sauces. A special garlic sauce or a jalapeno-based hot pepper sauce is the secret ingredient that adds a special taste to each sandwich. The actual sauces that we're known for, we have kept the same. That's original. However, um, there are quite a few specials that my husband, who loves to cook and is very good at it, has added to the menu board, so we now have 22 specials. The sandwiches are cut in half, and each half is as big as a whole sandwich at a lot of other places. What makes the sandwich so good, other than the sauces, in my opinion, is the fresh bread. I got a traditional salami sandwich with Swiss cheese on Dutch crunch. Across town, we visited Amora, another longtime family business serving up Mediterranean and Middle Eastern food, complete with house-made breads made in this oven every day. We visited at lunch, and the elegant dining room was busy, which meant the kitchen was turning out plates quickly. Okay, that's the lamb kebab, one of the most popular dishes. One of the attractions of the restaurant is you can see the kitchen from almost every spot. You can see the rotisseries turning and the chefs tending to the oven. We do the traditional, but with a California twist, meaning we use fresh local ingredients to put out the dishes here. Owner Sam Shihade recommends the meza platter, which is an appetizer platter of sorts. It had a little bit of everything, including hummus, baba ganoush, tabbouleh served with tzatziki and tahini sauce, falafel, and warm, fresh pita. After watching the kitchen's detailed preparation, it was finally my turn to try. <laughs> And for dessert, I had this beautiful pastry of filo dough filled with semolina custard with confit orange topped by house-made rose water ice cream. I'd come back just for this. To top all of this delicious food, I thought a strong cup of coffee would hit the spot, and boy, did I find a good spot. 
It's called Dead Eye Coffee Bar across the street from City Hall. The small modern coffee bar serves traditional coffee drinks and some not so traditional ones. Red Eye, which is a drip coffee with one shot of espresso, a Black Eye, drip coffee, two shots of espresso, and then the Dead Eye, three shots of espresso. That's hot, we can do it cold, that's more caffeine. We do that over cold brew, which is already more caffeine than your regular cup of coffee. Are you kidding me? I decided on the cold brew red eye with one shot of espresso because I was afraid. Although the place is small, it has a great layout, the people are friendly, and the baristas are real artists. So if you're in South City and you need a pick-me-up, here we go. All right, we'll, I'll let you know if I'm up all night after this. I had, <laughs> I had one of their coffees this morning. I had the strongest one. I think I'll be up for a couple of days. No big deal, no big deal. I do want to mention that South San Francisco has a great Mexican food scene. I just got, look at this burrito I got at La Tapatia here. Uh, you want a serious burrito or you can go to La Morena around the corner. Uh, they're all, there are a lot of good spots here for Mexican food too. So if you come to South San Francisco, you will not go away hungry. Coming up a little later on in this program, we'll talk about some of the craft brewing going on here at a place called Armstrong Brewing. Well, Sal, you had me at hello, but you also had me with that Dutch crunch, salami, and cheese. <laughs> My goodness, the sandwiches look fantastic. All of it. Great job, Sal. Appreciate it. <laughs> he had me at the Baba <laughs> I, you know, I, I couldn't help but thinking how uh, people here in South City have really come out. We have hundreds, if not more, people here in Orange Park. So I talked about civic pride. There's also a civic responsibility that many people here in South City have responded to and are acting on. So coming up a little bit later today on the 9, as we are taking you to South City, we're going to talk about the CERT program. This is not CERT's the breath mint. This is CERT as in Community Emergency Response Team. It is all about being being prepared, taking care of yourself and taking care of others. Fire safety, search and rescue, team organization, disaster medical operations. We're going to talk with a member of the fire department here in South City about why it's so important for residents to get involved, not just to take care of themselves and their neighbors, but mm -hmm. to others who live in the city if disaster should happen here. All right, look forward to it. Hey, great start. We're just getting warmed up out here. Much more to come on the newscast. We're going to check in with KTVU's Frank Malicote and as always, entertaining zip trip trivia just how much do south city residents know about their own city that and much more straight ahead you're watching the nine live from a socked in south san francisco Mike, my goodness. Joel Faustino leading the St. Augustine Chancel Choir. He founded it eight years ago and he leads it today, 30 members strong. I asked him, why do you do it? He says he does it for the service of the Lord and they're all volunteers. It's beautiful. The sounds of voices only and a drum and a keyboard. It is magical and it is warming up this admittedly chilly Orange Park here in South City this morning. All right, let's check in with KTVU's Frank Malico right now. Speaking of Orange Park, he's here. I don't know where you are, Frank, but I know you got people around you. I got a ton of people around me. Good morning, one and all. We're talking trivia on this beautiful Friday. Believe it or not, this city, before it was South San Francisco, was known as the city of bait. That has since changed. It's also known for its fog. That has not changed. We're feeling it this morning, and as Mike said, loving it as well. The city's got a rich tradition and a lot of history, so we took to the streets to find out what South San Franciscans really know about their town. South San Francisco has been known as the blank city for years. Can you fill in that blank? It's a quiet or something. The quiet city? Yeah. Wow. Um, capital city. Capital city. <laughs> capital city! Yeah! The city is a very good city. It's a very good city. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I can't argue with that. Have you ever looked up on the hill over there, Sign Hill, and seen what it says? Industrial city. Oh. South San Francisco is industrial city okay. then. Okay. You needed a little help there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you give me a hint. The letters up here on Sign Hill spell out South San Francisco, the industrial city. 
and they've been here since the 1920s. I'm right now sitting on the D in industrial, and I want to know how big are these letters and what are they made of? 35 made of steel. They're bigger than me, I know that. <laughs> I was going to say 25 feet. <laughs> 25 feet? Yeah. What do you think they're made of? Um, Gravel. As long as I can see it, everybody can see it, who cares what they're made of? <laughs> well, the letters are cement. They say they're at least 15, 20 feet long. 20 feet long? All right. Multiply that by three. 60. 60 feet. Each letter. Wow. Each letter. True or false, South San Francisco got its name from a very big meat packer out of Chicago. I never heard that. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, the meat packing industry had a big influence in the town. True. How'd you know? I guess. <laughs> true. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> Are you sure? No, yeah. but I'm just, I don't know. Too true. Sad. Yeah, I couldn't have made that up. <laughs> All right, we're in front of City Hall right here. You've walked by it a few times. Yeah. It's modeled after a very important building in our nation's history in Philadelphia. Can you name the building? Oh, <laughs> these are tough questions. U.S. history. Oh. Think back. Eighth grade. Oh, my God. Let me give you a hint. Okay. The Declaration of? Right, Independence. And the name of the hall would be? I don't know that. What's the name of the hall, then? I don't know. Constitutional? Constitutional? I'd say Independence Hall. Independence Hall. Is that you sure? That's what I'm going with, yeah. You are correct. Yes. It's the industrial city. It's also the birth of biotech. Can you name the biggest biotech company? Genentech. Oh, you knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genentech. 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 Genentech? 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 Really? Okay, Genentech. <laughs> you are correct. Awesome. All right. Go fly. What's your little one's name? Genentech, yes. All but one got that. They've been around since 1976. This is Sparky, the fire department's mascot. Can I have a high five, Sparky? All right, I understand you dance too. Can you give us a little move? There you go. His entire department's watching right now, laughing. Well done, Sparky. All right, guys, we'll send it back to you. Hey, Frank, I've driven by it a hundred times. It never even occurred to me that you could walk or hike Sign Hill. What was it like? Yeah, you know what? It is a very cool park. It's really about a mile from here. Butts up right against the neighborhoods. Uh, we hiked up there. It's a 1.2 mile loop around the top of the mountain. You can go up to the letters and check them out. They are 60 feet long, as you just found out. Some of the best views of the bay, you can see from there into the airport, Milbrae, San Bruno, and Daly City. Eucalyptus trees, wildflowers. Uh, you know, if you want a quick day hike, I highly recommend it. It's gorgeous and easy access right here in South San Francisco. Awesome. All right, Mike and I will have to ditch these boots and uh, put on the hiking boots and get up there. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank, for that. All right. Joining us live right now here in Orange Park in South San Francisco, she is the leader of the city, Mayor Carol Matsumoto. Mayor, thanks for joining us. Thank you for showcasing this of wonderful Oh, of course. Cars. You know, we were just talking about Sign Hill. I mean, do you get up there often? What do you love about it up there? I used to when I was younger. <laughs> oh, stop it. I spent more time slipping on the acorns and on my fanny than <laughs> upright. But we used to plan up there. And then, did they tell you stories about some of our senior senior seniors they used to slide down the letters on cardboard oh. they're great right. stories no, great. from up there you know you were mayor according to my notes back in 2000 2004 2009 2014 and now it's safe to say you like being mayor of south san francisco here carol <laughs> no <laughs> what, it what, is, what, is... What, what, what do you love about this city I especially mean, leading it I... <laughs> I love, I didn't, first of all, fifth time because I didn't do it right the other four times. So they're giving <laughs> me up one oh other God. time. But I love the city because of the diversity. I, I love who we are. I love the fact that this city from way back is so resilient. I mean, we've moved from, from cattle ranches to some flowers to industrial and now the largest biotech cluster in the world. And, and as, as you probably, in all of your interviews with other cities, change is difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and and despite our, our being, you know, we have the largest biotech cluster, we're still a blue collar city, yeah. which well, is good. So, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about today and going forward. You, you mentioned blue collar. I did a little house shopping here in South San Francisco and I found that the average price of a home right now is just over a million dollars. I know you have a big push to build affordable housing on public property. Tell me about that plan. Okay, back in the day, because we we produced the largest low income housing for uh, an affordable, but then the state got mad at the cities and they took away our redevelopment funding. And so our city, as a result of that, we were very judicious because we were proud of that and we understand we're really workforce. So we had accumulated property, et cetera. We had to then, uh, with the dissolution of, of, of redevelopment, we had to sell it and give it away to others. We're back with the mayor of South San Francisco, Carol Matsumoto. Sorry about that little technical glitch. Uh, you went on and on about how great uh, the people are in this city. What's your favorite thing about South City? I love the fact that we're resilient. I, I love the sense, I always say welcome to the South San Francisco family, because that's who we are. Even with the new millennials that are coming in, that, that's what we're all about. They make a community, and we're all about community. And you're not alone. You've got a good council, right? Yes, I have. I have Vice Mayor uh, Rich Garbarino, Council Member Floor Nicholas, and Mark Nagales. And we're all a team. We're I all a team. It. Great. Mayor, pleasure. Thanks for having us. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. All right. One of the things us. I do love about South San Francisco is a little place they make chocolate. I know my mother's a big fan of it. It's been around for decades, and now have a little taste of what it's like to be inside Seize Candies. Did you need any lollipops or anything else today? As someone who grew up in South San Francisco, this is your backyard. I mean, yeah. how well how well did you know Seize? How often did you I come I live in? just five minutes away from the Seize Candy factories. So, uh, my aunt worked in the factory store and retired from there. So Seize has been our family tradition forever. We got the first store up here in San Francisco in 1936, and then a factory in San Francisco in 1940, and then later in the 50s, the factory got moved here to South City. I mean, we use those, some of those same recipes that Mary C's used back in the day. I mean, the fudge is still a Mary C recipe, our Victoria toffee, and our bonbons um, are hand dipped just like she used to do back in the day. Um, it's like Willy Wonka to go back into the factory. It's great. <laughs> That's the one thing customers love about C's is that where lots of things have changed in South City, C's is still the same. You walk in, the candy still tastes the same, the floor is still the same, just like when you were a kid. So it, it's a memory and a tradition, and I hope it'll be here for a long time. C's has been a big part of the community. They donate and do fundraising with the local schools and programs, and um, it's always fun when they have local events to see the old vintage cars that Seize brings out um, to the events. And thanks to Denise Rado for sharing her story. I can imagine going to high school, smelling the butterscotch, oh. and then years later starting to work nice. for the company that makes all the chocolate and butterscotch and all the candy. It's got a little yeah. peanut brittle here. Do you have a favorite? Actually, peanut brittle or the thing with the well, almonds then here and you the go. caramel. You oh, can have the box. Wait, right. does Mama Me Back have a peanut brittle or does um, she have a favorite? Well, there's some other candy here right next to us. Okay. I mean, if I have a favorite, I do like any chews, I guess. Okay. Dark right. chocolate, milk okay. chocolate. Um, right, right. You know I, what I love? Do, when every every time we go, they give us like a little lollipop or a little sample of a little current yum yum, and so it, it just kind of entices you in. So I'm, I'm all about the free sample issue. Speaking you know. of lollipops, July 20th, just so you know at home, is Lollipop Day at Seas Candy, so you can go into any Sea uh, store and you can claim your lollipop. Nice. How about that? My mom always says my dental issues are because of Seas Candy. Oh no. Oh, well. But she says it with a smile because uh, candy makes her so happy. Awesome. Yeah, All right. Very good. Uh, so good to have Seas Candy here in town. There is a more than just candy and coffee and good Mediterranean food. South Castaneda is going to give us a taste of what's happening inside Armstrong Brewery when we come back as our zip trip has taken us to South City this morning. So stay with us.
Augustine Chancel Choir under the direction of Joel Faustino. He started the choir eight years ago and he leads it to this day and well beyond. They are all volunteers, Mike. Think of the practices, think of the rehearsals, think of the time and dedication given, all with a smile on their faces and a beautiful, beautiful sound uh, making its way across uh, Orange Park and far beyond here in South City. You know, the mayor talked about the future. One thing I do like about cities is learning about their history. And I think about South San Francisco, right down the street from where we are is uh, Oyster Point Marina. And think about what was going on there back in the 40s. I mean, they were building, you know, ships for the Navy. Sure. In about two years span, I think they built 43 ships in about 48 months. And that was, again, right here in our own backyard. No wonder it's called the Industrial City. And that's it. A lot yeah. happening here, a lot of history, a lot of song, and a lot of fun. Uh, Frank mm -hmm. Malicote uh, has uh, taken it out here in uh, Orange Park. A lot of people gathering, despite the fact it's kind of chilly and cool, Frank. All right, thank you very much, Gus. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you're coming to South San Francisco and decide to maybe go a couple of miles over the speed limit, have I got news for you, Keith? Follow me. Excuse me, gang. Excuse me. Sparky, how are you, buddy? We're cutting through. Cutting through. They have really fast police cars. Sorry, we're going to ruin the picture here, gang. And we got Keith. We got the uh, Sergeant Keith, or Ken, Chakuti, who, uh, tell us about the Corvette here, Ken. This is a 1981 uh, Chevy Corvette that the South San Francisco Police Department uh, obtained back in the late 90s, early 2000s, that was uh, put together through donations from uh, local businesses and fundraising events uh, when the city really adopted the the concept of uh, community policing and outreach to children in the schools. As you can see, it's labeled uh, with a great sign, which stands for gang resistance education and training. Um, we used it as a tool to go out and educate our, our children in the schools to create a more friendly environment so they don't see the standard average police car at all their teachings and trainings throughout uh, the I school. I bet it's a big attention getter, right? It's it is a big car. attention getter, yeah. Um, we use it for mainly for a you know, it's a good photo prop. Uh, we bring it out to all of our community events, as you can see out here today. Um, it really draws the attention and shows the friendlier side of uh, the police industry. What people want to know, have you ever pulled anyone over in this, baby? I have not personally pulled people over in it. However, it is fully equipped and it is a real uh, It's got the lights, the works. Car. So it, if you're motoring through town, beware, right? That's right. It could, it, you can get pulled over. You can it. get pulled over in a vintage 1981 Corvette. Uh, Sergeant uh, Ken, thank you very much. No we appreciate it. So uh, there you go. Words to the wise. If you're uh, driving through South San Francisco and you got a fast car, bring it down a little bit. All right? There you go. All right, Frank, thank you for that. You know, someone I've interviewed over the years here in the Bay Area uh, through KTVU is Jackie Spear, Congresswoman yeah. Jackie Spear. Yeah. And one thing I never knew is that she actually got, she grew up right here in South San Francisco. For some reason, I always thought it was San Mateo. Right, right? no, she absolutely did. I think yeah. you may have thought San Mateo because she, of course, represents much of right. the peninsula, San Francisco as well. When you talk about Jackie Spear, I think at this point, most people do know about her harrowing experience as she was shot and left for dead in Jonestown, Guyana, when she was there uh, with Congressman Leo Ryan. This yeah. is back in 1978. Uh, she says that is one of the many instances that really uh, solidified why she dedicated her life to public service. It was incredible to have a chance to sit down and talk with the Congresswoman. She actually grew up in a fairly small house, just about a mile from right here where we are. Our so the last row of houses on Parkway on Sign Hill is that we could break down a cardboard box and we could get up on the top of that hill and slide down those letters and into our backyard. So it was a, it was a great childhood. We know her now as Congresswoman Jackie Spear, but back when she was known as Karen, Jackie is her middle name, Spear grew up in this house on Parkway. My parents bought their house on Parkway for $30,000. I mean, that house today is probably over a million dollars. Congresswoman Spear was born in San Francisco and moved to South City as a young child long before biotech came in. This was a blue collar community. My parents were blue collar. My father worked for Loomis Armored Car. We lived in that little house right on the hill and uh, I grew up here. Now our childhood home is worth more than a million dollars. It has a different paint job, the purple is new, and the main strip through town is changing as well. You know, I could walk you down 
Grand Avenue and show you some of the places that are still there and some of the places that um, just recently closed because the community is changing now. Spear points to a teacher at Parkway Heights Middle School for starting her on a path that's led to her career in public service. Mr. Jacks, who just passed away, um, was the person who inspired me to be a leader because I was in the eighth grade and he made me editor-in-chief of the school paper, the Panther Scream, and he would call me chief. She says that gave her the confidence to lead her peers and later run for office. She now represents much of San Mateo County and part of San Francisco in the House of Representatives, the same area that was the setting for adventures and challenges that shaped her earliest years. It was a great childhood, very simple, but great childhood. 30,000 dollars. Her parents bought that house for 30,000. I can't get over that. As we talk with the Congresswoman, you know, we've heard a lot about blue collar, you know, working class, hardworking family. In this city, yes. In this city. Yes. So Jackie Spear grew up in a household. She had a brother. The brother had a paper route. If the brother was ever sick, guess who was expected to roll the papers, really? get on the bike? Jackie, Jackie Spear. Spear delivered newspapers here in her hometown of South San Francisco. So she said that's just one of the many lessons she learned growing up here. Look, if you need help, I'll help you out. Great so. story, Gossia. Yeah, I like individuals who still drop papers. I still get a paper. I know you do. I have a lot of respect for those people who still drop papers uh, to those driveways. All right, let's get over to our co anchors Sal Castaneda, one more time over at Anderson Brewing Company. Hopefully you've uh, tilted a pint yet there, Sal. Well, we're just about to try some beer here at Armstrong Brewing Company. I want to bring in my new friend, Ben Columba, who's the co-founder of Armstrong Brewing Company. Thanks thank for being much. with us, Ben, this early morning. Yeah, uh, you. you are uh, you know, bringing beer, craft brewing right to downtown uh, South San Francisco. We are right across the street from City Hall. And how have you seen this neighborhood change in the time that you've been you know, open at this uh, place? Yeah, so we opened just about four years ago. Um, and we like to think of ourselves as bringing craft beer to South City. We were the first post-prohibition post brewery to come to South City. Um, so the first kind of brew pub in the city in almost 100 years. You know, and uh, your uh, co-founder also told me that you wanted to incorporate South San Francisco history. So I noticed you have a lot of pictures of South City, old South City on your walls. I like the place. It has a real speakeasy uh, feeling to it. It's down the stairs and people can come here and try your beers. I want to try some of the stuff you've made. If you can talk me through um, a little bit of it here, I'm going to, first of all, I have to try the IPA. Now, George is showing where you might order that, uh, Ben, but uh, this is the industrial IPA. This is the industrial IPA okay. is a traditional West Coast IPA um, named after the industrial city. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so this darker beer is... That is one of our newest releases and the brainchild of James, our head brewer. Um, that is the Banana Pancake Stout. Banana Pancake Stout. Here I go. Tell me a little more about it while I take a sip. Uh, 40 pounds of fresh bananas, um, a little bit of walnut, a little bit of vanilla, um, and a little bit of maple syrup. The last one I'm going to try is you made a beer of Skittles, or it has Skittles in it, does it? This is our Drink the Rainbow. Um, we made it, um, that particular beer contains a little over 4,000 individual Skittles in the boil. Ah, it's tasty. I didn't think I would like it, but I do. You get a little bit of the Skittles on the nose, and then, um, yeah, you don't get much of the sweetness on the palate. All right, well, Ben, uh, on behalf of all South San Franciscans, I want to thank you for bringing good craft beer down here to downtown. It tastes really great. Appreciate it very much, and hope to see everybody down here in the can. All right, and uh, Mike and Gassia? Uh, this place is really is something where you can tuck yourself in away from the street, but it's right across the street from City Hall. All right, Sal, I'll be there soon. Hey, before we let you go, Sal, though, I want to show our viewers something that they may not know about you. Yes. I want to pull up your seventh grade school ah. photo. <laughs> I believe this is from Westboro oh Junior God. High School. Yes. Yes. where you attended, Sal, and I'll say it, you look yes. very sharp, my friend, very sharp. Uh, tell us a little story about that junior high. You know what? Uh, it's up on the hill there, up uh, near Callan Boulevard, so South San Francisco's bigger than you think. So from where you guys are, it's probably like a 10-minute drive up the hill to Westboro area, and, uh, you know, I enjoyed my time there. It was like a little mini high school before I we went off to Reardon High School in San Francisco. Fantastic, Sal. You look great, and uh, thanks again for that taste of the town, my friend. Uh, it was fantastic.
All right. Uh, I like the collars too. Talk about like a moment in time. Sharp, By the yeah. way, no one will ever see my seventh grade picture. Oh, so. we'll just see about that. <laughs> oh, I'm quite certain. I have friends and places. No, no, you don't have them in Livermore, about... my friend. All right, uh, so anytime we talk about South City, it always comes back to the people. Coming up in a second, our Claudine Wong introduces us to our hometown hero here in South City. It is a story unlike any I've heard before. A young girl needs help as she's growing up here in South City. And guess what she's doing now all these years later? She's turning around and helping her community, and there's an amazing amazing connection that we're going to tell you about next as our South City Zip Trip continues this morning on the 9. All right, welcome back to the nine live from South San Francisco. We are at Orange Park and we've been talking about the future of the city. We've been talking about the history of the city. I mentioned at the top of the newscast, Garcia, how I played a football game at South City High right. about 20, well, no, more than that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 92, 93, 25 years ago, okay. about 20 years before that, yes. there was a phenomenal football team in this city okay. and it was in 1973, the South City Warriors went seven and oh, not only undefeated, wow. here's what's cool about this. That team never gave up one point Oh, no. Wow. 42-0, 8-0, a bunch awesome. of zeros, you know. So, hey, it. good defense wins games, as uh, the coach said back then. So that 1973 team still remembered today. Boy, the st story is still being told around the dinner yeah. table, I'm sure. Uh, we mentioned a moment ago about a story uh, that started more than a decade ago about a young girl needing help here in South City. She turned to the fire department, and guess what? Now she's turning around and helping them. Claudine Wong, very busy out here in uh, Orange Park, and I know that you were able to catch up with this young lady, Claudine. Yes, Gazi and Mike. What I love about these zip trips is they give us a chance to tell these really special and remarkable stories and show you these really special spots. I want to show you where we moved here. We're still in the park, but we're actually in the sculpture garden, which is gorgeous. If you haven't made your way over here, this really feels like a, a well-kept secret because it's beautiful and we're loving spending a little time here. We're also loving the chance to tell you the story about this young EMT and this firefighter here in South City. Now, this is a story that is, is just incredible. When you think about the thousands of calls that first responders respond to every year in the city, this one 911 call many, many years ago brought these two together, and it has kept them together ever since. It's all about being prepared. But for EMT Sarah Busher, it doesn't feel like work. I've been working here for about a year and a half now. As far as she can remember, this is the career she's always wanted. Little things that like kids will fill out in like first grade. What do you want to be when you grow up? Every single one of them has said paramedic firefighter. And she says that dream may have actually been born when South City firefighters responded to a 911 call. She was just four years old. Two calls in the matter of about probably 12 hours. Captain Ottoboni was on both of those calls. About a year or two afterwards, I go into kindergarten. Um, I come and tour the fire station with the Girl Scout group. While I'm touring, they're showing us the ambulance. They asked us, has anybody ever taken a ride in an ambulance? As soon as it was answered, the light bulb just went on. And I, I looked over, and then I recognized Sarah, and I recognized her mom. I was like, oh yeah, okay, now I remember. We put two and two together, and it turns out I was in school with his son, Joey. Over the next 15 years or so, these two families would grow even closer. Both Joey and Sarah knew they wanted to be firefighters when they grew up. And I've ran into the captains and stuff like that, and I said, I can't wait to come be a firefighter and work for the city and stuff like that. And a few years ago, when Captain Ottoboni's son, Joey, left for college, Sarah stayed close to home. I finished my associate's degree in fire technology. I've done a college pre-service fire academy as well as my EMT certificate. In the fall, I'm going to start paramedic school, which is about a year and a half process. And then after that, I hope to be able to be hired. She's not going to quit until she gets it. So I just that's why I tell her just to keep going. And while there are no guarantees that she'll get to work here in South City once she becomes a paramedic, she's already making her mark as one of only four women in the department. And it is changing, and of course it's changing, and to be a part of that change is honestly like one of the greatest things for me. Both admit it is something to think about, the remarkable odds that had them crossing paths for that first time so long ago. We're somewhere in the neighborhood now of 8,000 calls a year, so the odds of of me being on duty at that particular time to be uh, the one who responded to her house, you know, that, those are pretty long odds. Pretty remarkable when you see where they are today. 
These are pictures of their two families in D.C. on vacation. And both Sarah and Captain Ottoboni's son, Joey, there in the blue shirt, are still working towards that dream of becoming firefighters, a dream they are getting closer to every day. All right, back live out here at the Sculpture Garden at Orange Memorial Park. You know, what also binds these two together is really this belief and this feeling that you have of how much they love their jobs and how much they love helping people. So we certainly wish them and uh, Joey the best. And, and you feel like South City is just safer with people like that uh, as of the first responders here. And so really remarkable story. And we wish them the best. Exactly. Remarkable story indeed. Claudine, thank you for that. You know, when we started here at KTVU, when I say we, Gassi and I, it was uh, 2005. Yeah, spring. And you may not remember this, but guess what happened in March of 2005 right here in South San Francisco? An official tornado touched down. Remember? Absolutely. Remember? It was my, it was my first story here. here at KTVU, you bet. And there was damage. I mean, this was not just... Dozens little... of homes got hit, right. you and, know? And I remember I came out here and I talked to the people of South City and every person said, this is unheard of. They had never been through anything like this before. You don't think about um, tornadoes when you're living in earthquake country, but every now and then yeah. it just shows you the kind of microclimates we live here. Right. Know? And I remember the professionals who came out and helped that day. And there were also people who helped their neighbors. And if you live in South City and you want to help your neighbors, there's a way for you to do that. I would love to welcome Ken Anderson from the South San Francisco Fire Department. Thanks for being here with us. You were here to talk about the CERT program, which stands for Community Emergency Response Team. You guys are the professionals, guys and gals, but you can't do it alone. Correct, yes. Tell me what you're asking of the residents here. Uh, well, we're just asking them if they have uh, time and they want to be a CERT member. That uh, A good start is uh, one of our classes that we're having August 17th on Saturday is uh, what we call Ready South City. And uh, that's where they can learn a little bit about CERT, but they can also learn disaster preparedness skills for themselves to learn at home. Why is it important to have, you know, CERT team here? Uh, we'll take a look at today's newscast this morning, right? You talk about two main big stories. You look at uh, Louisiana yeah. with the heavy rains coming in Hurricane Barry or Tropical Storm Barry, and then all the earthquakes happening in Southern California. Um, that's exactly why we need a CERT team, because there's just not enough first responders Wonders. in our city. I mean, we were talking about the tornado that hit in 2005, but really probably the number one that we're thinking about is an earthquake, you know, that a CERT team members would help in the rescue or search of spots that you guys can't get to necessarily initially. Correct. And what, what our, what, what's so great about our CERT team is they're all hazards. So you just talked about tornado, flood, and earthquake. And, and what they do is they take care of their family first. So they learn skills at 36 hour academy and they learn skills to take care of their family and then their neighbors, and then they come and respond and help us at, at the fire stations uh, in their community. I love you. you. know, My husband is a member of our hometown CERT team. Oh, so perfect. Yeah. We're, but, but for those who say, I can't possibly do it physically, there's another way they can give. Sure. I mean, uh, cash is always good, and that helps uh, helps us keep our CERT team running. Um, and, uh, you know, with 150 members and uh, about... 45 of those members are super active. We are, they do about 8,000 hours of volunteer time a year. Incredible. So, um, and that includes their training and then just being active in our city. I love uh, it. Support it, do it, or help help make it happen. Yeah. Ken Anderson of South City Fire. So nice to have you here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, of course. Great job, Ken. Appreciate it. Be safe in your work. All right, still to come right here on the 9. <clears throat> Excuse me as I clear the throat. We've got about 10 minutes left to go, and I'm going to probably have some wine to okay. help me out here. Right. It's 9.50, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere. There's oh. a wine school in town. We're going to learn a little bit more about. I to go to this. All right. I'm more of a white wine guy, okay. but, you know, it is chilly out here, so maybe some red wine this morning. You're watching the 9 live from oh. South San Francisco. We're back after the break. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Yep. sounds of the St. Augustine Chancel Choir. They've been lightening up and warming up uh, this park here in South City all morning. Our zip trip has started to warm up a little bit thanks to the sunlight. All right, joining us right now is David Glancy with the San Francisco Wine School that is located, David, right here in South San Francisco. Absolutely. We're in South San Francisco on Grand Avenue across from City Hall. Now, when uh, I think of school, I think of like math and English. Do you guys actually teach about wine here? We teach about wine, but it doesn't have to be hard. It's wine, it ought to be fun. So we train the trade for careers in wine and hospitality, but we do fun consumer events and classes, how to taste and talk about wine, to learn your own tastes and ask for it effectively. So this Pour something here, by the way. I'm gonna, do you mind? Yeah, no, no. Gossie, I'll slip it wait, down your way wait, too. Am I supposed yeah. to, I mean, so I'm a total novice. Yeah. So it, if, if this was my first time trying wine, do you swirl it? Do you smell it? Where right, do you start? So we smell it first. Okay, really get in there. 
We swirl it again. Okay. We smell again. It'll or just take a sip now. of it, right? Yeah. We're going to take a sip of it. You can swallow, but we're in a perfect environment. I don't need a spit cup. What are we drinking uh, right here? That's nice. I don't need a spit cup. You can't waste it. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Back to nature. Yeah. So we're tasting a little Riesling from Alsace, from Leon Bayer. Um, the idea here is showing style. If I've only got a couple of minutes in Wine 101, we teach the basics. Okay. Understanding your taste. Do you like crisp, creamy, Do you like chewy, sweet? and so, what does all that so mean? So this can be like a girl's evening. This can be a bachelorette. This can be a mommy's night out thing. It could be bro's night out well, too. I yeah, guess I'm in on this. So hey, I'm going to myself. the red, David. What's the red here? With the red, we've got Genuk Cabernet Sauvignon from Horse Heaven Hills in Washington State. So the idea is the Riesling is showing crisp and the Cabernet is showing chewy, if you will. It's got tannic like coffee. It is dry and gripping, um, whereas Woo. the acid is more like lemonade. It's bright and refreshing. We go from one it. coffee to another type of coffee in here. Okay. David, thank you very much. Great job with the San Francisco Wine School. If you thank get a chance, you. get out there. It's located right, right here in South City. All right, so our, uh, our zip trip here in South City has been incredible, but zip trips are far from over. We are heading to Sunnyvale, we're going to Clayton, we're going all over. So thank you so much for joining us. We're going to keep sipping and swirling and enjoying all that South City has to offer. Let's go climb uh, Sign Hill after hey, this. Hey, hundreds of people here at Orange Park. Here's a toast to South San That's Francisco. Right, to Congratulations. South City. Thanks for having us. Yay.